guys, it's Barry and DR. It's good to be back with you after the long weekend. Hey, I'm sure a hefty percentage of our subscribers already know who Steve Deese is and have watched the Steve Deese show. Uh, if you haven't, you ought to tune in because he does have some very interesting guests. And uh, in this segment, though, I thought it was really a well well-documented segment, but it's only Steve giving his opinions himself about what the country would need to do to get back to work. And it made so much sense what he said. Uh, coming from a re relatively unbiased, even though I might feel the same for, for my country of Canada, I can't say because I, 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 I couldn't vote in the States, right? But uh, in any event, uh, have a listen, okay? And we'll pick this up on the other side. Some excellent points, Steve Dees. It is time to stop entertaining any more of this. Any more of this. It is time to course correct and focus, focus full steam on reopening the country. Now, how do we do that? Here's my idea. Here's my way forward, all right? The first week, and I want to prove, here's the thing too, I don't want to just theorize this. I'm living out what I'm telling you I think we should do. I've, this isn't me just, hey, you know what, uh, you, you, let other people go out there and, and, and take the lead. Nope, nope, I'm doing this myself. So the first week that we were permitted to go out to eat was this weekend here in Iowa in our county. My family did so without masks. Just like the first week we were permitted to go to church, also this weekend, my family did so without masks. Even met one of our Blaze TV viewers there and his family. Made sure to take the initiative to shake his hand. We both had hand sanitizer. Let's not be idiots. Take chances we don't have to. Let's, it's a false choice. We don't have to be panicked, nor do we have to be dumb. Right, So we sanitized afterwards, but we enjoyed a good manly handshake because we're men and that's what we should be doing. Anthony Fauci be damned. So I'm doing these things, okay? Next, everything should be relatively normal for every American except nursing homes and elderly with pre-existing conditions. Everything else should be relatively normal. That means no outdoor events anywhere should be canceled. No outdoor events anywhere should be canceled. Indoor events still may require social distancing, masks, temperature checks, etc. Children should head back to school. Boy, the BBC, the British media continues to just crush Boris Johnson. The story in the London Daily Telegraph about how terrible the code was from Imperial College that the UK locked down with and everyone in the West followed suit. And now you've got the BBC who was crushing Boris Johnson on lockdowns last week. Man, they're coming back for more now. Bringing on the chief scientist from the World Health Organization to say she has seen no escalating numbers amongst nations that have put the children back to school. Thoughts and prayers to all of you lefty blue check marks bound and determined to have the kids stay home for, for school this fall because you just hate Donald Trump so much you want to wreck the country. Not even the WHO is on board with that. So there you go. Children go back to school. Next, we have a window right now. We need to take advantage of this. The pandemic is almost exclusively sequestered in nursing homes. That means we have a window to get to natural herd immunity in lieu of a vaccine that we may never have. We should take full advantage of that and turn America into Sweden 2.0. We have the window to do it right now. If we do it right this time, we can make up for the calamitous and moronic lockdown strategy that failed our elderly, we didn't save them, that failed our healthcare system, we wrecked it, that failed our economy, that's now in deep recession, and failed our constitutional liberties that are imperiled in numerous states and locales across the country. And by the way, natural herd immunity will help protect us from the feared second wave that everybody is afraid of. So here are some common sense steps, okay? Get us out of our homes and into the sunlight. Encourage outdoor activity over indoor sedentary sloth. 
Uh, put on as many things outside in the sun and the heat as we can. Incentivize outdoor activity over Netflix and chill. Let's boost those immune systems. For businesses, open businesses everywhere with two simple demands. Anyone who is sick stays home from work, regardless of what those sick symptoms are. And rigorous hand washing. That's it. Treat this like a really bad flu season, like the one we just had in 2018, because it's actually less than that for everybody not living in Brooklyn, Queens, or New York City, or a nursing home. It's less than a bad flu season for everybody else. Furthermore, no federal money for any state denying its citizens its rights and liberties. If you want to stay closed... You want to intercourse yourself because you hate Trump that much. You can do that dumbassery on your dime then. But no taxpayer compensation for self-immolation. No taxpayer compensation for self-immolation. You will wreck yourself on your time and dime, not on the time and dime of the American people. We need to demand more transparency from the CDC or just cut its funding. Why can we get so much more detailed data from foreign governments than our own? Where is the national antibody push? Are they afraid of the results given what all the provincial ones have already shown? Why can I get a national antibody test in Spain, Norway, Denmark? I can't get one from the CDC. Hmm. There's a couple of possible reasons for that. And they're both bad. Malfeasance or incompetence. That's it. That's the plan. Well, well, there's one more thing. Fire Fauci the fraud. Send him out on his ass. Because he's been wrong about everything. All right? Tell him, hey, you can wear that mask in the unemployment line. That's it. That's the plan. Anyway, welcome back. I think there's a lot of good, hard, just plain truth to that. And I uh, hope many of our subscribers will agree and pass it along. Uh, what I like about it, though, before moving on, I've just rearranged the screen a little bit. I want to show you guys something. But um, before moving on, what I really do like a lot about it is the simple fact that you have choice. If you want to go back to work and back to school and everything, and it showed, the facts show there's, there's no more, there shouldn't be disputing. It's other, nothing other than fear. But if, if a person is still stuck in that fear, and, uh, and uh, I don't want to lean, but it, it seems to be of a particular party, uh, is stuck in that type of mode, well, then they should have the ability to stay home. It's a free country, so you're told. But why should others pay for people to stay home? That's, that's where the problem lies, okay? So people of one thought pattern that want to go ahead and get back to work and get things going and get the velocity of money at least starting to turn again, nothing's coming back strong, I'm telling you now. And I'm going to show you that is why I rearranged the screen here. But just, you should be able to be allowed. I agree with what he's saying about going back out for dinners and. I agree with about not being stupid. Use hand sanitizer once in a while if you're worried about it. Uh, per se, I'm not, but if you are, that's great. If you want to wear a mask, go ahead. In spite of all the information that, that shows you shouldn't do it, that you're free to do it. So this is where I, I hope we could leave this, you know, us or my enemy. If you're not my side, you're my enemy kind of kind of attitude about almost everything we touch base on because uh, like I say I haven't got a horse in the race but I do know since this video uh, the funding issues with not only the CDC that are being questioned but actually the WHO the World Health Organization funding has been canceled by the by Trump and the US government again if you want to go back go back to work if you don't you don't I liked it but don't expect somebody who's willing to work to pay for someone who's not willing. And that's the key issue. Here's the damage and why I rearranged this screen. Here's the damage. Okay, so often what I do for the mentors, one of two or three subjects I research a lot is actually commodities is one and also economies. And um, have a look. I've used this website many, many, many times, uh, eurocontrol.int. 
in this particular case, I have it set and we're looking at air traffic, okay? And it's time sensitive for this. So what I wanted to do is to emphasize what so many people are talking about um, the damage, the true damage of, that's going to hurt in terms of employment, in terms of starvation, which I totally agree. And it was all unnecessary. That's the questions people years from now that are supporting this behavior. Those are the questions they're going to have to answer to future generations. How could you have when the evidence was there? And that's what's going to come back. Of course, I won't be around for it. I'm too old, but that's what's going to get a lot of them. Here is the damage, what people are trying to explain. Last year at this time, flights, okay? A a an economy can't be growing and it can't be holding its own if the Baltic dry is down, which is sea freight, if air freight or air movement is down, consumption of electricity, and in some cases, fuel. You can pinpoint a nation's economy fairly easily from there. From them, the roots branch off into specific companies and specific areas. But in terms of a nationwide GDP, those, that's all the information you need. Now, this is what damage has been caused. Right now, around 3,200 flights across Europe simultaneously. And if I scroll over, that's today, okay? 385, 380 around there, 390. That's the damage that's been caused by that kind of thinking, okay? Sometimes a graph puts things in better perspective for people, okay? Or lockdown and coronavirus pandemic amplified to destroy our economy. And today. Now, anybody with a rational mind that would think that makes the least bit of sense. Remember, does the threat warrant the response? Anybody who can justify that, that's just Europe alone. I can go on, but I, I, it's, all the information is following pretty much the same, okay? And I think a lot of people watching this right now know it. I, I've been out of work two and a half months myself. So I think a lot of us are feeling it. No flights, there's no customers for me. So why not put your time to good use and, and try to open up some good people that have just been a little bit hoodwinked, okay? Anyway, so if this, and it's the same with the Baltic Dry, and it's the same with, want to go UPS or, or any, any other freight company, okay? One year before, same date, a year after, within a month, okay, because it's it, it needs a complete month to do a cycle. So this would have been April last year versus April this year. Anybody who can dispute that, and please don't fall prey to the card about a hundred thousand deaths. One death is tragic, but that is not the point. People, there's over 1.3 million people dying each year just in simple traffic accidents. All we've ever said, all the mentors and, you know, how I got nominated to be talking, all we ever said was, does the threat warrant response? There's no question. It's not even debatable that it does not, not even close. Till next time, Barry NDR, talk to you soon.